Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're working our way through our list of viewer requested questions and today is from Matt Purcell. Was that through the email, RC? Yes. One request, could you do some tutorials on how to how, on how you develop your campaigns and keep track of progress? Now we're not actually sure what that means, so we're going to try and answer lots of questions here. First, we're going to try and answer the question how we come up with our campaign ideas and kind of get it going. And the second, the keep track of progress bit, we think that you mean our dynamic campaigns, how we how we run our dynamic campaigns. Simple as that. So, first thing is to talk about the two different campaigns that we do. Uh, so I'm going to jump in here. Here is our main page. Here are our campaigns that we've done over the years, over four, five years. Two types of campaign that we do, dynamic campaign and non-dynamic campaign. When I say dynamic campaign, there is no such thing as a proper dynamic campaign mode in DTS World. It's not programmed. It's coming, but it's probably going to be years before it comes out. It's a complicated thing to program. So we do it. We have our own way of doing it. And I'll show you the steps. If you like, this is a tutorial for a dynamic campaign, maybe. So most of these are non-dynamic campaigns. That is that we have a rough theme from the beginning. Let's just hit the Syria campaign. It's a non-dynamic campaign. We say the bad guys are Syria, Assad, whatever. We're the good guys. Our role play is this. We're a PMC group hired. And we go in and each mission we have, uh, we, we, we do the mission and the next mission that we do after that is roughly based on the performance of the previous mission, but only roughly. A bit like old Dungeons and Dragons role play. You know, if you go through this door here, then it goes on to the next room. If, uh, so, so if we destroy the power station on mission one, mission two goes on to the next mission based on if we destroyed the power station. And if we hadn't destroyed the power station, we go into a different mission. So it's very, very roughly based, but it's not, yeah, it's not fully dynamic at all. And then we've got a fully, di fully dynamic campaigns, and these are rare because they take a lot of work. They take a whole group of people, many hours per week, to get dynamic campaigns. Examples are the ones I keep at the top here. Coffee campaign is our biggest dynamic campaign we've ever done. Uh, it lasted in total, I don't know, like a year and a half or something 63 missions and uh, columbia campaign is another dynamic one we're in the middle of at the moment and there is one more dynamic one down here and i apologize i can't remember which one it is so so be it so if we'll talk about coffee and campaign for our dynamic campaigns so the first question part of the question is how do you come up with a campaign idea and develop it like like the beginning of everything someone has an idea i'm in the bath i have an idea rc's taking a shower he has an idea he thinks oh that would be cool and then we have a meeting and you guys don't get to see the meetings i actually want to make them public because they're actually really interesting we have a meetings they last sometimes for hours and contains all of our guys and we sit down and we say look i've got the coffee or i've got the columbia campaign coming up here's my idea and then we hash out between us because it has to be a mutual decision at the end of the day hash out between us how it's going to be, roughly speaking, how many missions it's going to be, roughly who are the bad guys, who are the good guys, what's the rules, what's the difficulty, because all these campaigns have different rules. For instance, um, and this is one of, many, one of many sheets that we use. If I jump down here, we can see we've got campaign difficulties. So each every one of our campaigns in that there fits into easy, medium, or hard. Medium is our most normal one. Hard, very rarely we do easy anymore. This would generally be the older ones when we weren't as capable. But, so we decide on a difficulty package uh, for that particular campaign and as well as that a whole bunch of other stuff then depending on how complex the campaign is going to be this is very complex this is medium complex this is very simple so these are three modern ones complex medium simple this needs a whole team of guys assigned to it to run it this needs a small team we've got two guys basically running this in the background that do the work the organization the role play and whatnot and this is just me well technically sims doing the armor but and i'm doing the dcs part because it's just it's simple and this is not a dynamic campaign so that's how we do it really we never know how many missions it's going to be but we have a rough idea we roughly know coffee is going to be roughly this many months although it did extend way past what we thought uh, we know this is roughly about 20 missions but you know it depends on performance so that's how we do our campaigns, that's how we think of them, that's how we organise them, that's how we assign different duties and stuff like that. The next thing we have to talk about is how we run and organise the dynamic campaign. So, let's look at these two here. Obviously your team of guys, two to about six guys that are going to run the campaign in the background. Usually the kind of guys, the smart guys that don't want the publicity, it's that type of guy that I'm talking about. First thing you need is a, um, a main sheet. So we've got this. This is our main sheet for uh, which campaign is oh this is coffee campaign it's called censored for some reason but this is actually a coffee campaign it's just the first one i came to this wasn't actually designed by this was designed by coffee or one of you know those guys who were around at the time 2018 so it's really one of the many things they helped us with and good input they had into uh, uh 
who are we? GR. And you need all these different tasks, uh, all these different tabs here. And um, things that, for instance, intelligence. So various notifications, NOTAM, stop presses, uh, have to be put throughout the campaign, depending on how we did each day and different things that need to be communicated between the mission design team and the guys that are going to come and play the mission. And the mission design team, sometimes they fly with us, sometimes they don't fly with us, sometimes they just like doing the background kind of nerdy work, as they call it. Uh, all different things, all different pictures that have to be shown, different ground forces that have to be updated. Inventory, if it's an inventory based, uh, some of our campaigns have inventory based, so you get so many airframes per uh, plane type or so many missiles, even uh, the metal campaign, I think with a limit of missiles or something like that. So this is a static I feel like, database of where everything is kept and updated uh, for that next day. I guess you call it the database of the campaign. So for a dynamic campaign, the, the reason it's called a dynamic campaign is because progress or lack of progress that you've done exactly on day X translates directly to day Y. So you start off with a big mission that is going to serve the entirety of the campaign of 20, 30, 40 days. So let's, I'm going to hop into DCS now and see if I can find um, an example for you. So this is Columbia campaign, the dynamic campaign. This is day 12, so we're quite far into it. You can see the blues have pushed really far into it. We would have started on day one. There would be no blues here at all. And it would have had on day one all of the bases, all of the SAMs that were ever going to be in the campaign all set out and what we do is each day when we do some damage when we kill a SAM site or we kill some ground units then we remove them from the next days if you know what I mean we, we, we save this as day 13 once we've actually flown day 12 and we remove the units that have been destroyed and if blues have made any significant gains then we push them those blue units forward a bit like um, an old board game um, like I can't remember what it's called but you know Warhammer and that kind of thing now that said um, all uh, I mean how you want to do it is, is up to you in this case all SAM sites were already in all aircraft are already in um, now you can't see a lot of aircraft here because they're actually spawned not from the mission editor they're spawned from scripts in the background and I may or may not be clever enough to show you you can see this stuff here uh, we've got mist in the background, moose, or mist, I can't even think it's moose, isn't it? That's spawned, that's background coding that Onslaught and Iron Wolf and the other smart guys do in the background, which runs intelligence that I can't possibly understand. I just have to trust them. Uh, and so that planes will spawn in depending on how well we're doing or how bad we're doing or, or whatever. We're going to run that mission. And once we've run that mission, then I or one of the boys um, in this campaign, I think it's uh, Iron Wolf that's doing this stuff, he will come into the re record. Every mission that's done has a record on TACView and as a track file as well, but TACView is just a lot easier to use. I've got a video in the in the Educational uh, Explained series ex uh, showing you how to install TACView and get it going. So that one there, day 12, that's the same, uh, if you like, mission file we've been looking at. And so day 12 was this, and you can see exactly what was destroyed. This is the final record. So we have to rely on that TACView, uh, TACView works. So I'm just gonna, uh, just to see an example here. Um, where was that what was SAM site we attacked? There we are. Oh, nightmare mission this was. Uh, so in, so we came up on this site. We all, most of us got shot down, but we did kill that SAM site there. I know it looks like we didn't do much damage, but all of the SAM site, you know, it's now no longer a working SAM site, I can tell you that. And so what we'll do is record exactly which units have been destroyed, uh, which can be painstaking, but that's part of the commitment of doing a, uh, a dynamic campaign. And the next day, me or Iron Wolf, in this case, will go through for day 13. He'll go to that, load up that mission file, take out the exact units that were destroyed, because we do things seriously. We don't want to wipe the whole unit thing out. We take every single little unit, or even if we half destroyed a unit, uh, destroyed its half its health, then he can do that. He can put its health down at 50% or whatever. That's how accurate you can be if you want. And then save it as day 13. And that's day 13 ready to go. So only the exact things that you've destroyed count as what's destroyed on the next day. And that's the dynamic campaign. That's eventually what DCS will have installed in it, roughly, uh, we hope. Um, because this is a lot of work, as you can imagine, to go and do all this and have all the guys liaising and errors not happening. You can see Moose kicking in here. You can see these, these three MiG-21s have spawned in to combat us because we're doing particularly well. We've got certain airframes in the air and stuff like that. Uh, we've got uh, JTAX here doing intelligent things that I don't really understand. Uh, this SAM site here was uh, ground units. We simulate ground helicopter and ground units. All have separate missions that are all fully dynamic. So, for instance, 
Helicopters here have missions again. I don't really understand how it works. They have to bring certain crates from certain farps to certain areas, put them in certain areas, then certain triggers will happen, and then certain units will appear. So if they put enough crates from there over to this forward operating base here, then this bunch of SAMs appears or a FOB appears or something like that. It's all coded in the background. And don't ask me how to do it. It's, you know, it's proper programmer stuff and then that's recorded in day 13 that gets put into day 13 in exactly the right place so that's how it dynamically builds and exactly the same thing for coffee campaign the other dynamic campaigns and as well as doing helicopter dynamics it also does and this is a bit beyond me this is iron wolf speciality that he loves doing is um he does ground-based fights as well so we've got the air fight we've got the helicopter fight and we've got the ground-based fights and these are full of the dynamic as well so this uh, these have all got different names these convoys and they started out they haven't multiplied or anything they started out at day one and if any of them gets destroyed then it gets taken out of that convoy um and and if they all get obliterated by the end of the campaign then so be it um that's just how we do it to try and keep it realistic so in this case they found an sa2 site that already been weakened um by an early attack day 11 a all he does is he clicks on them he just moves them into the middle and whatever happens happens in this case it wipes them out because it's a bunch of uh, m60s against a bunch of unarmed stuff pretty much and then that stuff will be taken off or mission 13 uh, from the misfile well, that's it really and we just do that repeat that day after day after day after day and hopefully there's no end to this campaign per se coffee campaign there was an end because eventually we run out of airframes there's an attrition rate the we didn't want an attrition rate in this particular one because we didn't want it hard difficulty we've got it set to medium difficulty in this case which means no limited airframes the other thing is is hard not to get shot down in this type of campaign when you're driving a vegan with a not useless but a not particularly good rwr and you're fighting sa3s and sa2s in unknown positions that and these are intelligent these are programmed to turn themselves off to lure us into traps and stuff um we just couldn't do this campaign on hard setting it we're just not good enough i don't know if anyone's actually good enough out there to do that kind of thing and eventually we'll chew our way to the end of this can finish the last guy and they'll probably spawn an end boss in or something like that um and that's it that'll be the end of our uh, Columbia campaign in one to two months however long it takes really in summary we've explained how we have the inception of our campaign how we develop it how we uh, apply a team to it uh, the guys in the background doing all the work how we convert that if we want to to a dynamic campaign which we do sometimes like this and how we organize the campaign how we keep it roughly on our database how we update mission to mission to ensure that everything is perfectly matching every position of everything including where the jets land so if, if an a4 here lands a Bezlan here rather than Tbilisi here then there's an extra airframe available at Bezlan and let one less a Tbilisi and if he takes off on mission 13 here and lands at Tbilisi an extra one goes here and one less goes here that's how kind of anal this is um and show you, and that's why some of the missions that these guys run the planes run um in this are not cool sexy missions they're literally just transferring from there that base to that base and that's it they log off after that they've done their mission because they've now got four more tigers at this airbase and so on it doesn't always work out well like that as you know but that's war so that shows you how we do dynamic campaigns it, like we said ed have hired a guy we believe to program real dynamic campaigns are we going to use the real dynamic campaigns for ed probably not we probably want to retain full control full unit to unit control so we'll probably always do uh, the way that we do it i expect i doubt ed would ever be able to make something this complicated i stand to be corrected as ever but um i, I don't think so that's all i can think of explaining there i think it's as thorough as i can be anything that you want to add rc on either campaign inception development and or dynamic campaigns with gr no, nothing for me to add on that. Right, I hope that was useful. Everyone go out and make dynamic campaigns and have fun. Ask any questions from us you need to, and see you later.